What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P. Today we're gonna be reviewing the brand new Razer Hyperflux, which is the wireless Mamba mouse along with the Firefly Hyperflux mouse pad now. And these are, you know, new competitors, something like the Logitech PowerPlay, along with Corsair's Dark Core and their Qi Charging mouse pad. I will have a trio head-to-head -head comparison coming up soon, before this video right now, strictly focusing on the Razer Hyperflux. I had a lot of questions in my first look and unboxing video. So in this review, we're gonna cover it all, answer all your questions, go over pros and cons, my thoughts and experiences with it in this review. First up, this is the Hyperflux Duo. It's the Mamba mouse with the Firefly mouse pad, and it gets its name from their new Hyperflux technology, which enables you to have a wireless mouse that is conductively powered by the mouse pad. The second your mouse touches the mouse pad, you now have power and you're ready to game away with no worries of your battery dying or dealing with any cables from your mouse. But first, let's take a look at the Firefly mouse pad. It does look like your usual Firefly that you've been used to. It's the same chroma lighting. But one thing that I'm a huge fan of is the reversible mouse pad texture. One side is a hard glide surface, but I'm definitely more of a fan of the standard cloth texture surface that I've been used to for years now. It fits nicely into place and it's good we have these options to fit our preference. The second you plug this in, it's gonna light up. There's a little power indicator on both the mouse pad's forehead and the butt of the Mamba to let you know it's being powered. Now you can nail that pop quiz in anatomy. Now as for the Mamba mouse, again, same form factor as the regular Mamba. It's the same 16,000 DPI optical gaming sensor. I think personally it's ergonomic and it fits my hand comfortably. I say this is more of a claw grip mouse for me, but that's gonna change depending on you know, your preferred grip and your hand size. However, there is one huge difference here. It's lighter about 30 grams lighter actually, coming in at only 96 grams. And that's because with the Hyperflux conductive charging, there is no actual battery. The entire mouse now is being powered versus your other wireless mouse out there that does have a battery inside. I didn't mind the weight difference. Some people like heavier mice. Some people do like them as light as possible for those quick adjustments to each his own. Now, due to there being no battery inside this mouse, this means the Mamba is solely powered by the conductive charging from the magnets inside the mouse pad. So if you take it off, it will stop working. And that brings up the most common question I saw in the unboxing video. Say you, you often readjust your arm while you're gaming or you constantly lift the mouse up from the mouse pad, will it disconnect and mess you up? No. So the entire time you're gaming, it is building this slight charge inside. But the thing is that charge only holds for around 20 seconds once it's off the actual Firefly mouse pad. Again, because there is no battery inside, this can't hold a charge. But your gaming will not be interrupted regardless of how you readjust or if you lift the mice up at all. You'll be just fine. This now also means you can only use the mouse with the Firefly Hyperflux mouse pad. You cannot use this wirelessly anywhere else. It has to be used with this duo. You can, however, plug this in and use it wired if you want to bring this with you or something. Say you're on the go, but that's really it. And again, since there is no battery inside, there's no way for this to hold a charge for more than those 20 seconds. So you're definitely limited. On the actual mouse, you have your illuminated Razer logo, the scroll wheel, and that little power indicator on the back palm area, your two typical DPI switching buttons below the scroll wheel, a forward and backward button on the side, a profile switcher near the front, and both the sides of the mouse have this rubber layer texture for a better grip when you're gaming. And as a wireless mouse, did I experience any lag or delay? No, thankfully. And due to their one millisecond response time over their 2.4 gigahertz connection, which is what you're gonna find with most of these new gaming mice out there, it was not an issue at all. And I could really can't distinguish a difference between this and a wired mouse. And just take a step back for a second, because you know, a year ago, people would scoff at the idea of using a wireless mouse or any wireless peripherals for that matter for online gaming or competitive gaming. But technology has advanced so much over the years and now in 2018, we do have reliable gaming mice like this that has a one millisecond response time where there is gonna be no lag at all. And it's great that I cannot tell the difference between a wired mouse versus a wireless mouse. So definitely great stuff. Now, as we shift things to the Chroma Eye Candy, there was one thing in particular that I needed to point out because this was a huge common question again in the unboxing video. And yes, you can change the color of the power indicators on the Mamba and the Firefly itself from green to whatever color. And this again is that visual indicator that lights up when you are actually powering the mouse. And within the Synapse software, you're gonna have all the controls as you'd expect. You could remap the functions and buttons on the Mamba, as well as this hyper shift mode for more functionality. Think of this like the equivalent of a function key on your keyboard. You could switch up the five DPI presets and intervals of one to find your exact precise movement preferences. Then when you actually change the DPI on the mouse, you're gonna have a little visual indicator on your screen, which is nice. 
in case you forget what DPI setting you're at or if you accidentally change it up. It shows you right there. And then of course in the Chroma configurator for the mouse and the Firefly mouse pad, the Firefly itself has 12 individual lighting zones in this light strip that surrounds it. And you can change those up individually or like most people just assign the, uh, the preset effects to it. You have your breathing effect, this fire effect, reactive and ripple, which are essentially the same thing, but I always like those. Your spectrum cycling, starlight, static, and your rainbow wave. But again, this isn't really anything new. These are the standard effects available on 99% of the current Razer Chroma products out there. So pros and cons, this is where you're really gonna wanna pay attention. I mean, for pros, like I said, it's insanely lightweight. It's plug and play, just works immediately, which is good. There's no lag when gaming. You still have your all your Chroma capabilities all across the board, which a lot of the competition out there does not have. But like I said, stay tuned for my three-headed comparison coming very soon. It's all just a great advancement in the sense that we don't even have a battery in this mouse, which is really cool, but that does bring up some downsides, which is the fact that you can't use this anywhere else besides with this exclusive Firefly mouse pad. So you're definitely kind of limited and the fact that this is $250 for the bundle. And that is a lot of money. There's no, there's no other way to put it. $250 for a mouse and a mouse pad is just damn expensive. Yes, it's this new technology, which is really cool, but that's just still a lot at the end of the day. Now at this time, they're not sold separately. They're sold, you know, as this bundle, but I do feel like later on down the line, once more mice come available from Razer, they probably will sell these separately and hopefully for a discounted price. Let's just hope. <laughs> then lastly, one thing to bring up from a consumer technology reviewer standpoint is this little thing that was tucked away in the bottom of page three in the product guide. And this is kind of important. So like I said, pay attention. You cannot use this on top of a metallic surface or top of a metal desk. I don't know how many of you have a metal desk out there, so it shouldn't be a big problem. Um, also, you cannot place your phone on top of that due to the magnets inside. It could potentially damage it. Um, just out of habit, I usually place my phone down on my desktop, whether it is on my mouse pad or right near it. And when I did, I saw some interference on the screen and I saw the $1,000 I paid for the iPhone 10 flash before my eyes. I don't know the long-term damage, but do not place your phone on the actual mouse pad. You also cannot place any uh, wireless charging products or peripherals near this as well. And it also says this is not to be placed within one meter of a router. I know for me, I have my router directly under my desk. Some people might have their router right on top of their desk, right near their peripherals and stuff. So that could be an issue. Um, I know for me though, I didn't experience any problems or interference with the router at all. I did a, uh, a, a speed connection test and I didn't notice any difference in speed when I ran the test with this on my desktop versus running the test again with the mouse pad not even in the room. So that, that's good. I don't know the really the long-term effects of it with the router there. Um, and in case you're wondering, I pay for 150 up and 150 down. I still usually only get like 70 max on average, uh, despite Verizon telling me that the, when I ran the test at 10.30 p.m. on a Wednesday night, that was uh, peak time. No, you D-bags, no. But again, from a reviewer standpoint, I did want to point that out. Just do not put your phone on this or any other um, wireless peripherals. And again, I didn't notice a difference with my router. And I don't think a lot of people are out there are going to be affected um, with a metallic desktop surface. But this also brings up that this can't even be sold in some countries. So do keep that in mind. I know Canada probably won't be able to even sell this. But at the end of the day, I am impressed with this because, you know, on the market right now, it is kind of a first of its kind with its conductive charging without a battery, making this mouse lightweight and it's never ever going to die on you as long as you're using this. You are now tied to Razer's ecosystem in the sense that everything is now Razer exclusive. Yes, but that's just going to be a trade off if you want to buy this. I do think that price is bonkers still, but if you want to pick this up, I have a link down below for you guys so you can check it out. And make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to have that trio comparison uh, with this versus Logitech PowerPlay bundle and the Corsair Dark Horror wireless gaming mice coming up very soon. So guys, that'll wrap it up for my review of the Razer Hyperflex. I hope you enjoyed and I hope it answered all your questions because there was definitely a lot to address in that first unboxing video. So I hope the pros and cons and breaking everything down for you helped you get a better idea of what this whole new Razer Hyperflux of uh, these two products are about. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.